Welcome to Keeping It Real, the largest podcast made by real estate agents and for real estate agents. My name is DJ Paris. I'm your guide and host through the show. Today is our monthly series, Closing Time with Chris Linsell from theclose.com. It's a partnership between Keeping It Real and The Close. Um, let me tell you about The Close. Theclose.com is the kind of real estate website designed to give agents, teams, and brokerages actionable strategic insight from industry professionals. They cover real estate marketing, lead gen, tech, and team building strategies from the perspective of working agents and brokers who want to take their business to the next level. Uh, by the way, before I continue, I also wanted to mention a great place to see tech reviews. If you're considering um, investing in some real estate technology for your business, it's, it's a great place to see unbiased reviews and they go deep. Um, so if you're trying to figure out the best CRM or, or lead source or all sorts of other products and services in the tech space for realtors. That's an, another great reason to visit the close, but uh, sorry, I got, I got, I, I, I screwed up my own live read because I was so excited to tell you about their reviews. But um, in addition to, to that, uh, please visit theclose.com. And just to make sure everyone knows that's the close T H E C L O S E, just like it sounds. And uh, at the very least subscribe to their newsletter. So you can get notified each time they publish a long form article um, with us as all, is all, with us as, oh boy, I'm having trouble today. With us as always is Chris Linsell. He is a staff writer and real estate coach for The Close. Now, Chris is The Close's resident expert on real estate topics ranging from marketing, lead generation, uh, transactional best practices, and everything in between. He's a licensed agent in the state of Michigan, and Chris has been part of hundreds of real estate transactions from modest rural starter homes to massive waterside compounds. And when he isn't writing, you'll find Chris uh, fly fishing or performing on the stage of his community theater's production. Uh, Chris, welcome once again to Keeping It Real. DJ, you made it. That was uh, <laughs> I made was, it through. <laughs> that was an adventure to get to the, to well, get to the end of that. Yeah, I uh yeah, I, I I was with some friends last night who mm -hmm. were uh some guys that that I'm I'm very close with and I'm mm -hmm. in my mid 40s. They are in their late 60s early 70s and so what's really great is we get together regularly and I get to sort of get it, get a little preview of maybe some of the challenges that are will be coming as I get to that age um uh -huh. and I realize that that mostly they have the same challenges that that us younger guys may have um mm -hmm. right now but it's like relationship issues job you know all the all the same sort of things we deal with but they have a lot of health issues and we were chatting last night and one of the one of the main things I've, I've learned from from these men is that they start to worry that they're starting to lose their mind because they have these little episodes where they make a mistake that they don't think they should make and then they go hmm is my memory failing do I have dementia and so there's this constant worry and so I was just thinking about that like maybe there's something wrong with me uh, <laughs> or I'm just having a, a one of those days so anyway I'm excited to um to spend today with you because we always have great conversation and you uh -huh. just came back from the Inman uh, conference, the Inman Select conference. I would love to hear uh, how that went for you. And you spoke at, at the conference. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was a good time for those who are not familiar uh, with uh, Inman. It's this little website, honestly, they're really nothing to, to sneeze at. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, of course, joking. Uh, Inman.com, one of the, um, uh, you know, one of the founders, I would say, of of the real estate news and journalism space online. Um, certainly a uh, a competitor of the close to some degree, though. Frankly, we kind of play in different uh, ball games. They they focus a lot on news, current events. You know what's happening today uh, in in markets across the country and and sometimes across the world. And we over on the close focus more on um, evergreen content, strategies, best practices, that sort of thing. So, um, you know. Even though we have some of the uh, some crossover audiences, we we really do different things, and so we're always excited to attend Inman conferences. Inman puts on great great live events. Uh, the Inman Connect conference uh, happens twice a year: once in Las Vegas, once in New York City. And uh, last uh, two weeks ago, or, or a week ago, I can't remember now. It feels two weeks ago uh, was the Inman Connect Las Vegas conference, and uh, yeah, it was quite uh, quite an event. 
Um, I want to, I'd love to go through some details, share a little bit with you. So, um, you know, let's, let's kind of break this into this convo into, into a few pieces here. Uh, the Inman conference for anybody who hasn't gone really is, um, there's really four main things you got to think about. Uh, the first is the expo. There's a ton of people just like at most real estate conferences. There's a lot of companies there representing their wares and showing off what they're doing. A lot of tech there, uh, pretty cool stuff to talk about. So you got the expo, you've got the, uh, the presentations. Um, I was fortunate enough to be asked to, to uh, present this year. So talk about that. Uh, the third thing is the uh, access. You get access to uh, a lot of uh, kind of movers and shakers in the real estate space that you don't normally get access to. Uh, and then the fourth thing is the community. Um, you know, you have a lot of agents that come together. Inman Connect conferences, just they're not cheap, uh, but they are kind of a full uh, throated uh, experience in the real estate space. And so you connect with a lot of like-minded agents when you go, because, you know, everyone's pretty committed there. So um, definitely a cool experience. Um, let's chat a little bit about, uh, first, I guess, about the expo. Uh, I saw so many cool tech companies uh, on display at the expo. And a big takeaway, I'd love to get your, your thoughts on this, DJ, is... Um, one of the things I saw was a real conscious move away from companies that are straight up and down lead generation companies and a move towards companies that are more marketing companies that have lead generation maybe as a component, but it's more about this holistic presentation rather than just like the straight up Zillow is just going to put names in your email box or bold leads is just going to put names in your CRM. And that's it. That's all they do. I, it's I was been at, a really interesting kind of conscious move away. I'm curious if you've seen or observed any of that, or uh, if you have any thoughts on that. I, I do. And I have seen that and I've actually seen it in other industries as well. I think when Salesforce came about in the software tech space, for those of you that aren't familiar, you probably know the name, but if you might not know what Salesforce does, they're, they're a CRM. So um, they basically created the what what arguably is the, the most fully featured CRM on the planet. Mm -hmm. And they got a lot of enterprise level clients, big corporations to buy in and use that as their CRM. And then they started to build ancillary products to really, you know, they got you, they got the entire sales team of an organization in Salesforce. And that's how their, their Salesforce uh, navigates through, through purchase, through orders uh, and clients. And then they said, Hmm, now we can create some HR resources and we can create billing and, and payments and all sorts of other products so that they create this, created this ecosystem that has just been tremendously successful for them. Yeah. And so I started to notice that real estate firms obviously have, have taken notice. And, and of course, mm -hmm. much like Apple or, or Google likes you to be, you know, fully utilizing their products. Google mm -hmm. does it sort of for free. Um, you know, Apple's more of a pay model, but they're both very similar. They want you utilizing their ecosystem so that you don't leave and you use all their products. I've noticed that in the real estate space. Uh, in particular, there's companies that are in major acquisition mode. Lone Wolf is, is an obvious example where they have gone out and boy, they seems like they bought just about everybody. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, 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 and full disclosure, I, I, I like, I, I'm very friendly with the lone wolf guys, but it isn't a plug for them, but I'm very impressed by how they've tried to round out their portfolio with, with just lots of different products and services. Zillow is attempting to do a similar mm -hmm. thing. Yep. Uh, I was, I was fortunate enough to get to go to a Zillow conference earlier this year. And they talked about uh, creating more products for brokerages, uh, more products for the consumer so that it's not just a place to search for, for property for a consumer. It's now a place to uh, get, get a lot of different things done. Um, and they're looking to roll that out. So I, I, this whole idea of, of, of the ecosystem being, you know, I mean, because if we think about it, it you know, look, Dot loop is a is a really uh, good example of something that has so much potential to do more. In my opinion, I, I got to meet um, the I forgot his name, but but uh, the CEO of or, or the president of, of Dot Loop, and mm -hmm. I said, "Oh my gosh, you guys, you're only doing document management right now. I can't wait to see what you have next because so many brokerages utilize DocuSign or Dot Loop or, or Zip Forms or any of the you know these these e signature platforms." And yet we also use 10 other systems for other other services. And 
And boy, it would be nice to, to use one service, maybe mm -hmm. even pay a little bit more for the convenience of doing everything in one location. So mm -hmm. anyway, I'm sorry, that was a very long answer, but I have noticed this, this uh, what I see as a trend to try to uh, kind of do what financial advisors do. Financial advisors used to be stockbrokers years mm -hmm. and years and years ago. They don't really exist much anymore, but it was, hey, I got a hot stock tip for you. Let's make you some money. Then it became, well, I don't just want that money. I want a hundred percent of someone's net worth. And I now want to manage all of their assets. And I'm going to take a percentage of, of those assets under management. That's where I, I see sort of some of these tech um, acquisitions and, and new offerings coming to be, but I'm curious to get your thoughts. Yeah, I completely agree. I think, um, uh, to your point, Lone Wolf was at the conference. Uh, Constellation was at the conference. Uh, Elm Street was at the conference. Uh, Zillow was at the conference, but not as Zillow. This, I mean, I mean, they were there as Zillow, but there was not a single place where they were, um, you know, a booth or a, a stage or a presentation where they, you know. Zillow was there to, uh, you know, kind of acquiesce on the on the virtues of Zillow Premier Agent. It was more of, here's what we're doing at Zillow to support your business as a whole, in addition to providing leads, which is a dramatic shift. If anybody can think about the real estate uh, messaging and marketing to professionals that was happening five or 10 years ago, it was like, companies like Zillow were essentially pointing the fire hose of leads at you and just drenching you in more than you could handle um, because it was just leads, 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 volume, volume, volume. All I want are names, 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 phone numbers, phone numbers, phone numbers. That is certainly something that is still important that we have the opportunity to make the connections that grow our business, but it is a much more holistic approach. Uh, and frankly, this was my big takeaway from the expo itself is there is a startling amount of shift happening uh, from what I would consider at one point to be single use one dimensional products towards this ecosystem approach. And I'm not going to um, kind of spoil uh, spoil the uh, the reveal here. But uh, I, I'm currently finishing the putting the finishing touches on uh, a uh, an article for the close um, about the best real estate marketing companies uh, that are out there, and I, the the company that I have named as the best real estate marketing company for 2022 isn't actually a marketing company. They are a company mm. that does something else first. And they provide marketing services as a part of their ecosystem. So you're gonna have to watch out for the close in the next uh, three or four weeks to see who who that gets named. But um, it was a surprise. And frankly, I didn't at first want this to be the case. I did not want um, a provider of another service to be the number one marketing company but they just can't get around it. They're better than anyone else that's doing it. And it is a real indicator of where the technology space is headed in real estate right well, now. Well, I think about this for, for everyone out there who is utilizing any smart home technology. So if you're utilizing uh, Google Home or, or Nest, uh, or you're using you know Amazon's, uh, maybe you're using an Echo Bee for your thermostat or, or you're using uh, Alexa for, for you know doing smart uh, smart lighting or, or whatever automations you might have in your home. Um, if you notice, if you're a daily user of those services and I am, you'll notice that even now they're both magical and also super clunky. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm thinking, um, you know, they work and they sort of don't work at the same time. Mm -hmm. They work more than they don't. But if you, if you're a daily user of, of automated voice technology, sir, automate or services, especially in your home, you'll, you'll, you'll have some frustrations. And I think the next evolution uh, for tech is to somehow figure out how to round out those smooth edges. And I think a lot of it's by getting somebody to buy in fully to an ecosystem. And that way you're not needing to coordinate your Philips lighting with your Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, Alexa app, and it sort of works and, and doesn't. Um, I think there's going to be this idea that you're going to pick a side 
in this mm -hmm. case, maybe Google or, or, or Am Alexa, and you're just mm -hmm. going to go full force because it works better that way. Yeah. Um, and so I'm wondering if, if, if that, you know, maybe you choose Zillow because they might have a bunch of other services that mm -hmm. they didn't have previously. Uh, HubSpot's a great example of, of a company that's kind of done this already. If, mm -hmm. if you actually ask some, I have friends who work at HubSpot and I'm always like, I don't, I can't exactly put my finger on how to describe what you do because mm -hmm. you sort of do everything. And they go, yeah, we kind of do everything. Mm -hmm. Hub Salesforce is the same thing way. So mm -hmm. I'm interested to see uh, how some of these companies begin to integrate their products and services together mm -hmm. to make it a more seamless uh, solution for for the agent or for the agent's client, which is also tricky. I mean, you know, think of I always think like you know, even putting somebody on an MLS search. Um, you're limited by the MLS provider mm -hmm. that is in your local area, which may be a good piece of software. It might not be. In most cases, our experience, I've seen many of these MLS uh, software providers over the years. Mm -hmm. I'm wildly unimpressed <laughs> um, with, with a lot of the tech uh, that they've done. And I'm curious if somebody could come along and just create a better experience for the agent and somehow get the buy-in of whatever the local or state associations are mm -hmm. to create a more holistic approach so that the, the the agent has a better experience than the client as well. Yeah, I agree. And you know, the interesting, I think, uh, component to kind of the end game of all of this to me is that to some degree, there is going to be a dependency on these kind of exclusive data sources like MLSs. Um, to really determine whether or not these sorts of end-to-end -end solutions are feasible. Um, a good example of this is uh, I uh, got a demo yesterday. Again, I, I'm not at liberty to say who gave me the demo, but I will say it was for a brand underneath one of these big umbrella companies. And uh, one of the things that they are working on, the reason I'm getting this demo is that they think that they have made a breakthrough in how um, to manage uh, uh, scheduled posts across um, various social networks, which have notoriously been difficult to kind of API, to connect to a third-party platform to schedule posts. And, and so I should we're, say- we're talking about services that, that previously have existed that you may be familiar with like Hootsuite, Buffer, mm -hmm. um, those those services yep. and it's in it, yeah okay I'm sorry I didn't mean interrupt no, no you're totally you're, you're right yeah. on the right track and so um, in fact I'll I'll go as far as say I have I have used uh, I'm a Hootsuite user uh, I've used Buffer in the past all tools that have been really helpful for me except when I want to say go to LinkedIn and I want to make a LinkedIn post I can schedule a post great but I can't tag somebody in the the Buffer um uh, uh scheduler and i can't um uh post the sort of like uh, additional add-ons that I could do, like um, if I'm working on the platform, on the LinkedIn native platform, and it kind of creates this kind of hitch in the giddy up because if I have to, if I can schedule a post, great, but when the post goes live, I have to go to LinkedIn, I have to edit the post, I have to tag in the people I want to tag, I have to tag the photos, all the stuff that I couldn't do off platform. Yeah. I'm actually not saving any time here. In fact, I'm kind of adding to my time, it feels like. Well, the company I was talking to yesterday thinks they may have cracked that when it comes to Instagram and Facebook. And so, uh, again, it just points to the fact that these companies that are working to bring these umbrella experiences together ultimately are going to be dependent on these kind of sticky uh, external uh, tools that don't always play nice with other tools. If somebody can figure that those those kind of sticking points out, it's game set match. I mean, there there will be a, a it won't just be a walk. It'll be a run to the companies who can bring together uh, all of those stacked kind of disconnected tools into one place on a single dashboard. I think we're actually getting closer to that. And actually, that that kind of reminds me of uh, kind of the next thing I wanted to talk about, which was from the main stage uh of the inman connect conference I heard a lot of really interesting people but the standout for me um is i heard a presentation from uh frederick eckland is, is does that name ring a bell to you it does but i don't know why 
Yeah, so he was one of the original million dollar listings guys on Bravo. Yes. Uh, very, uh, very big personality. Uh, his volume knob is cranked up to eleven and bro- broken off. I mean, the, he uh, it never does not um, fail to uh, to entertain on the TV, basically. And he is he was there giving interviews. He's a co-founder in a company called Real, which is basically bringing together uh the the a lot of the functionality of zillow but with the communication opportunities of like instagram and whatsapp uh so it is much more of a like real-time conversation with leads instead of this kind of disconnected request information from zillow they pass along the information you have to get back to the lead and figure out how to make a connection um i i'm not pitching the real product though it does sound interesting i'm excited to get my hands on it but what i am what i took away from this was that there are the a, a very common theme in the presentations at the inman connect conference was that it is going to take not just the kind of big brains of the real estate tech space but the advocacy of the leaders of our industry in order to motivate and create those opportunities for breakthroughs on these connectivity issues. Like you've got to get the the influencers out in front of audiences who are listening to say, hey, we want this in order to make changes. And uh, Eklund uh, inferred that this needs to happen on the local level too. Like if you are a leader in your local market and you think, I hope my language isn't too harsh here, but if you think that your MLS sucks and that you, the way that uh, data is dispensed and dispersed from your local market is terrible uh, and you deserve better, you need to get in front of your board and say that you can't just sit back and hope somebody else does it the leaders especially but everyone go to your local board meetings speak up and say hey listen this sucks this is terrible we have competitors who do do this so much better than us stop taking my damn money to pad your own pockets and do something with it and i thought i was a, a little taken aback by how provocative that statement was but the more i think about it like this is so in line with kind of the advocacy approach to real estate that I've always um, uh, 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 carried a banner for myself. It's just kind of pointed in a different direction. And I really think that it, it's a message that hits right now. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, I, I do some, uh, I serve on a few committees at our, our local level here. And I will, one of mine is called the Member Care Task Force, which is specifically to, uh, facilitate feedback from from the realtors here in Chicago and find out number one what the what the what the uh, the local association can do better uh, for its members but also to find out what the members think of certain tools that are, are being offered and trainings and and you know it's funny because I'm literally sit on a committee that would love nothing more than to mm. send out a survey every single week to every realtor in Chicago and say, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? That mm. is literally our job is to figure that out. Of course, we can't send out uh, that that sort of survey too often. But I will tell you, people are listening because there are, are member care tasks for, task forces on, on many associations. And all you have to do is just lob a phone call over and say, hey, I have a suggestion you know, for, for, for the association, where, where do I direct that? Mm -hmm. I promise you, I mean, look, every association is different, but Mm -hmm. I promise you at least that our association, the Chicago association of realtors, we, we listen, we're not perfect, but boy, our jobs are dependent upon, well, I I don't work for them, but, but Mm -hmm. the people who do work for them, their jobs are dependent upon having paying members. It's the only reason they exist. Uh, And, 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 and so you, they're, you're their boss in in a sense, you're not going to tell them what to do, but you're going to offer suggestions about, and remember most of those people aren't practicing agents, right? These are people, in fact, in a lot of cases, they're not allowed to practice the employees at most associations are from my understanding is are not are not out there practicing they're not allowed to so they don't really know what's going on unless you tell them mm-hmm. yeah that's the that's the truth and that kind of leads kind of, kind of uh, into the uh the third thing i wanted to talk about which was my experience specifically from the um from the stage at inman i spoke on uh the topic of 
uh, recession proofing uh, your brokerage business. And um, though my message wasn't quite as provocative as Eklund's was, I did say a couple of things that, uh, I, you know, I think are in the same vein as far as understanding the um, a, a, a real estate professional's uh, not just responsibility, but opportunity to be a leader uh, specifically in a changing market. So uh, I won't go too deep into it, but essentially one of the things I said from the stage um, was asked a question about, uh, you know, not just what brokerages can do to kind of recession proof and shore up their business, but what can agents do too? And I said, this is actually a time right now where you have an opportunity to get off your your heels and onto your toes before everyone else and do some scooping. And the scoops that you get to get here are one, as a high performing agent, you have to recognize that the needs of your buyers and sellers are going to change. The agents who do it poorly are going to be reactive to that change and try to shift their business and their uh, offerings after they see those changes happening. The agents who are leaders and are going to be successful and make a lot of money through recessions are going to be the ones who are proactively uh, changing their business offerings, their messaging, their branding, and their positioning. So recognize and predict how your client's needs are going to change because we're still going to buy buying and selling houses. It's just going to be for different reasons. Start start getting a game plan for your changing of your of your marketing, branding, and positioning now. And be ready to pull that trigger when you see that uh, change on the on the way. And then the other thing uh, that I, this is one that I got a lot of um, conversation about afterwards. We'll put it that way: is I told folks to remember we've been in boom time in the real estate space for a couple of years now. There are a hell of a lot of real estate agents who joined our profession when times were great. And they didn't need to be an expert just yet because there was so much demand for buying uh, and so much activity uh, in the space that you could be kind of mediocre at your job and still get some transactions done. We are not going to be in that place when the recession, uh, the U.S. economic recession kind of rolls through. And so as a successful agent, you need to recognize the fact that there's going to be a heck of a lot of agents in the next six months who are going to be considering going back to bartending. These are people who have real estate licenses. They have their uh, licenses hung at reputable brokerages. These are people who are considering quitting. Now is the time to build a team because you have a huge labor pool to pull from. You have people who want to be successful but don't have the skills or the experience to be successful. If you've been thinking about starting a team, the next six month is absolutely when you should be doing it. I, I'm a recruiter, so I will tell you, um, and this is something that I, I wish I wasn't necessarily saying uh, uh, to our audience, but I'll tell you the truth. Um, I think brokerages, especially smaller brokerages, um, and, and we have almost 800 agents, which sounds like we're this massive brokerage. But in, in reality, we we think of ourselves as more of a small brokerage, and that's not a false humility thing. We just that's kind of how we operate. I will tell you the two biggest things we're <laughs> the thing we're most afraid of is uh, is losing agents because as as we know that transactions are down, everyone's feeling that. Of course, as Chris was saying, a lot of people who are part timers or people that haven't had a tremendous amount of success full time are going to find other things to do with their with their time because they're not paying the bills. So, from a retention perspective, brokerages are I would uh, I would hope uh, who who deal with not just top producers, people who you know will fall off uh, a bit when when the uh, when as the the economy uh, change or the 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 home buying uh, market and selling market changes and has changed, um, these are people going to leave the industry or or at least um, find other alternatives to supplement their income. So we're, we're scared about that. But I'm I, from a recruiting perspective, I am very excited because mm. right now is is the time as we start to see production um, do really decrease for even top producers. I mean, if it's, if it's hitting the top, most top producers, and I know lots of them and they're all telling me that their production is down. Mm -hmm. Um, these are people at the top 1% level across mm -hmm. the country. I just spoke mm -hmm. to a top agent in, um, I forgot what County in, in, uh, in California. Um, it's one of the top counties in the country anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
he's like, I can't believe it. My production's down too. This is a guy who sells on average like uh, two million dollar homes is 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 his uh, median uh, price. Um, so the the point is is it's hitting. So what are people what do people do when when their production's down? They start looking for other alternatives mm -hmm. or looking for other brokerages. So team building really you're no if you're building a team you're no different from me recruiting for for my agency you're just recruiting for your team people are struggling right now brokers or agents are struggling this is a time to you know consider building a team and thinking about holistically as you approach a client to be able to say here is my team here's what we do it's not just me we have people helping out in, in different capacities that's a, that's a much you could argue not for everybody, but for a lot of consumers, that's a strong sales pitch. Um, and you have this opportunity to even consider at some point bringing on those team members uh, with maybe salaries as opposed to cutting them in on the commission. We're, I'm starting to see that uh, at certain firms as well and certain teams. So a lot of opportunity to pick up uh, uh, realtors, I keep wanting to say brokers because in Illinois, everyone's a broker, mm -hmm. um, but we'll just say agents, picking up agents. This is mm -hmm. this is the time where people start to freak out. Yeah, big time. In fact, I, I you hit on the on something that I I am glad you mentioned because I I was uh, were or, or hesitant to bring it up, but the salaried model uh, is something again when whenever economies shift, people consider other options. You can offer people. Uh, if you've got the the infrastructure to do it, a steady income that puts you uh, out in front of uh, you know uh, of the the cost of that in uh, of that uh, labor by leaps and bounds. And one one model that I really like that I've seen uh, a lot of teams uh, recently starting to institute is this idea of a salary or an hourly wage plus a um they call a bonus for closing um and so and you can only offer that to somebody who is licensed uh technically um there are ways to kind of structure it semantically so unlicensed folks uh, can be a part of that as well but you know this idea that you can essentially pay 15 bucks an hour um you know or 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 right around there and then uh, offer a small bonus on top of uh, on top of that that you know hourly or guaranteed um, for closings can bring your labor costs down significantly. I mean, I mean, we're talking 30, 40, 50 percent for U.S. based workers. That's a game changer. If you've always wanted to start a team, but you feel like the margins aren't quite right, I mean, I'm telling you, this is. <laughs> I mean, shoot, we might have to stop doing this podcast so I can go back and start a team full time at this point. Because, like, I genuinely am, I can see the writing on the wall in my own market. Everybody should be doing this right now. Yeah, it's 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 a great, a great thing to consider. And right now is when you know a lot of agents are just struggling. And and mm -hmm. so yeah, you know if 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 your production is down, or if your team's production is down, or if you're an individual agent thinking of leaving the business, I also think now is a great opportunity for you mm -hmm. to reach out to teams and say, hey, yeah. Uh, I'm struggling right now. Do you have an opportunity for me? Mm -hmm. Maybe not waiting for the teams to reach out to you. Reach out to teams. I I tell you, teams are growing. They're growing, growing, growing. And and I I suspect if you reached out to five different teams, three of them would say we can we we can work something out. So 100%. this is an opportunity. At least the teams I know here locally are are like we just need more bodies. Yep. You know, this is there's a labor shortage in in a lot of different sectors of of the economy right now. Um, finding good help is is always a challenge. And if you want to get more steady income and you want to work out some sort of plan, maybe you're taking just a little tiny percentage of the profit of the team, but mm -hmm. you're getting a steady income. And then maybe that can change over time. This is mm -hmm. a great time to have those conversations. And so, yeah. um, and, and to yeah. that point, uh, just to put a bow on this here, the two uh, biggest voices as far as sponsorship at the Inman Connect conference were side and uh, EXP. Both are brokerage models that are built on the idea that teams are essential for the future of real estate. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's really interesting. Well, Chris, I know, uh, I know this is a great, probably place, place to wrap up, mm. uh, this, this 
conversation today. And we want to thank Chris, as always, for giving us some insight on what we missed at the Inman uh, at the Inman conference. I have been to the to the New York conference before. It is exceptional. Mm -hmm. uh, I've not yet been to Las Vegas. And I, I always think, you know, yeah, maybe it'll run you a thousand dollars or so, maybe more. Um, well, probably more when when you're dealing with travel. But Boy, you you will get you will get at least a few good tidbits. So a uh, huge fan of, of those types of conferences. And anyway, um, want to just thank Chris for for sharing with us what what the most what the majority of us missed by not attending. Um, and also want to thank you for your just insights in general and congratulations on speaking. You you speak at a lot of these, but it is so impressive that we get to have you as well. Mm. So I am I'm very happy for that. And for everyone who is listening, um, please visit theclose.com. They also have a subscription model. 95% of what they offer is completely free, not behind a paywall. But if you want to take it to the next level, they have a incredibly reasonable uh pricing model for getting to that additional level of coaching support and training and it's what a dollar or so a day uh roughly yeah it's uh, really cheap even less yeah. than that. <laughs> boy i would to get one good idea that might get you one sale uh it, it, you know if that's all you ever got um boy you'd make uh, it'd be a nice roi for the year mm -hmm. so definitely um it's called the close pro so visit the close.com number one read their articles they're I think they're the very best with respect to tech reviews, marketing information, and just overall advice about what to do in your business. But then also consider subscribing to the Close Pro. It's incredibly inexpensive. It's kind of a no-brainer, honestly. Um, so, and you can, it's a cancel anytime scenario, I believe as well. So definitely check that out. And Chris, uh, I know you got to run. So thank you so much. Please, everyone go visit the Close, tell everyone about the Close, and of course, also about our podcast. Let's let's uh, let's keep our, our viewership and, and our, and our our listenership numbers increasing and we thank mm -hmm. you for for helping us do that so chris we will see you next uh next month it was a pleasure can't wait it was we'll a, talk to you soon thanks chris